Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Tutorial. This is Unit 5, Momentum. The section is 5.I, Momentum Representation. Here you could read the scenario. Part A asks us to sketch the following graph as a function of time for the time the ball is in the air. In this scenario, a ball is thrown upwards exactly like this picture. You do not have this picture in the workbook. I just have this picture to show you what it means. A ball is thrown up straight up in the air with the initial speed v naught. It goes up. It hits its maximum height where velocity goes to zero. Then it comes back down. It reaches the same height in which it was thrown. Air resistance is neglected. Okay, so let's take a look. What is the acceleration here? Well, I know the acceleration is going to always be negative 9.8 because this ball is going to be experiencing an acceleration of negative 9.8. Okay, downwards. And I know that if this is uh, flat, I know velocity is either going to be linear like that or linear like that. Because the velocity is <clears throat> all negative here, the slope here is going to be negative. So it's going to be like one of these. Okay. So it's either going to start from here or you're going to start from here. But we're going to take a look. What is the velocity? At the start, the velocity is positive. It hits zero, then comes back down which is this. It starts positive, hits zero, then becomes negative, right? For the velocity to be like this, let's take, uh, we want to look at its positioning, okay? At every single point, the slope here is decreasing. So at every single point, the slope of the position graph has to be decreasing, right? At at some point, it's going to hit zero, then it's going to keep going down, right? So this is how it curves, like this, then it curves back down, all right? This, when the position here is flat, it's referring to this point. So this is what the position, velocity, and acceleration looks like. Now, let's look at the potential, the potential energy of the ball earth system. If we want to look at the potential energy, we are basically looking at MGH over time. All right. So again, M stays constant. G stays constant. So literally, we're just only looking at the height over time. And we're going to see it. What happens to the height? Well, the height starts at zero. And we see that the height increases. Okay, then the height reaches its maximum height. Then it comes back down. Some of you might think, okay, then shouldn't it look like this and this? Okay, that would be wrong because it actually has to curve. So it's looking like this. What is the momentum of the ball? We know momentum is mv. That is what momentum is. Again, mass gets canceled, right? It's constant. So here you're just looking at the velocity over time. And we know the velocity over time was exactly like this. So we bring it down exactly like this. So the velocity graph actually matches the momentum of the ball graph because P equals to MV. What about the net external force on the ball? Well, we know that that is going to be th this. Why? Because F net is equal to MA. Mass is constant, so F net is just really equals to A. And what is A in this problem? Well, we know A is equal to the gravitational acceleration, which is negative 9.8. Okay, or 9.8 downwards. So the acceleration and the net external force on the ball is the same thing. Next, you want to look at the total, um, total mechanical energy of the ball earth system. It says here that air resistance is neglected. So we can say that the system is closed. Therefore, you can use conservation of energy. So the energy of the system is consistent. And the energy here, it has a bunch of energy because it has uh, the energy final equals to the energy initial. It has a kinetic mv squared plus some potential mgh, right? So at the bottom, it has no potential. 
It has all kinetic as it goes up. It has all potential at the highest point. Then when it comes back down, all that potential gets converted to kinetic. But the total of the energy stays the same though. Right? It stays constant. Energy is never lost in this scenario because the system is closed. What is the kinetic energy of the ball? Well, we know kinetic energy is one half mv squared. All right. Now, a lot of you are like, whoa, so shouldn't it look exactly like this one? Because isn't it just velocity? N not quite because of the squared term. Okay. So because it's squared, it starts at the same spot. But will it ever reach a negative value? No, because the squared. So it reaches the zero at the same spot, right? It reaches that zero at the same spot. Then it's going to go up because it's x squared. Okay, do you see? V squared. So this should be like a V squared, right? Let's look at the part B. You're going to fill this in. So the slope of the position versus time graph is equal to the average velocity. It's average velocity because it's the average slope. The velocity of the slope of the velocity versus time graph is equal to the average acceleration. The area under the acceleration versus time curve is equal to the change in velocity so i'm just gonna write delta v the area under the curve versus the area under the velocity versus time curve is equal to the change in position the graph of momentum versus time it is the same shape as the velocity versus time graph because momentum is equal to mass times velocity number six the net force Graph versus time is the same shape as the acceleration versus time graph because the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Seven, the slope of momentum versus time graph is equal to the net average external force. Eight, the area under the curve of the net External force versus time graph is equal to the change in momentum or the impulse. Next, the potential energy versus time graph is the same shape as the vertical position versus time graph because the potential energy is equal to one half mv squared. Okay, the potential energy comes from the conversion of all the kinetic energy due to conservation of energy. Remember, system is closed. 10. The kinetic energy versus time graph is related to the velocity versus time graph because the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. Oop, oops, I got this one wrong. Because the potential is equal to, sorry, sorry. Sh 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 sh. This answer here would be, whoop, the answer here should be, um, MGH. That's the formula for the potential energy. Number 10, right? The graph, uh, number 10, the kinetic energy versus time graph is related to the velocity versus time graph because the kinetic energy is equal to one half MV squared. 11, the total kinetic energy of the graph is constant because it represents the sum of the kinetic energy versus time graph and the potential energy versus time graph also there are no external forces acting on the system so there's no work done therefore the to the total mechanical energy of the system is constant right we say the system is closed all right so there you go those are all your solutions for five i